来，站起来，站起来，站起来。That's why you were at the Ronda. When it comes to cycling sporties, the Tour of Flanders is the granddaddy of them all. Today we're out here with 16,000 of our best friends to take in the 174k course. We're going to ride the Koppenberg, we're going to ride the Old Quermont, we're going to ride most of the great climbs, and you're coming with us. Are you ready? Let's roll. I've done this ride seven or eight times and I will do it again as often as I can until I am dead. How do I love the Ronda Sportive? Let me count the ways. It's the course, it's the people, and it's the party. First, a quick primer on the Tour of Flanders. The Ronde van Flanderen is the biggest one day race in Belgium. And of course, Belgium is absolutely nuts for bike racing. The men's and the women's races are held in early April on narrow, sharply shifting lanes, with cobbled climbs, or Hellingen, punctuating the course and providing springboards for attacks. Win here in the World Tour race on Sunday, and your career is made. The Sportive, which is now dubbed We Ride Flanders, is held the day before on many of the same roads. There are four routes, 74K, 139K, 174K, and 224 kilometers the latter of which mimics the pro race in that it starts in Antwerp and finishes in Udenard. The other three start and finish in Udenard, and I'm here to tell you the full route is for the birds. Sure, it's big and long, but the extra logistical brain damage getting yourself back north after a long day on the bike, bah, not worth it. I've often described the Belgian country lanes as single track for road bikes. Often just one car wide, the paved stretches are like nothing you'd find in America constantly ducking, banking, rolling, and often including holes, cobblestones, and road furniture. The roads keep you on your toes. With an enormous pack flowing through the route, it is impossible to get bored. You are in the flow. Then throw in the fact that you're whizzing through ancient villages with beautiful churches, bucolic scenes with farm animals, and pivotal battleground scenes from decades of pro racing. It's bike riding heaven. The cobble climbs are short usually between 300 meters and two kilometers long. It's enough to be an endorphin generating challenge for sure, but not so long as to be straight up demoralizing. To make the cobbles as smooth as possible, we use 28 millimeter Schwalbe Pro One tubeless tires. On my 3T wheels, which have a wide 25 millimeter internal width, these tires plump up to well over 30 mil. I put about 75 PSI in mine. One benefit of tubeless is being able to run lower pressures without worrying about pinch flatting a tube. Lower pressure, of course, means more comfort and often better grip. Now about the people at the Ronda. More than half the riders in the Sportif are from outside of Belgium. They're predominantly Brits and Dutch, but there are also many Italian, Spanish, French, and American riders. And they're almost all people who enjoy group riding. And this is one of the biggest group rides in the world. Many of you are now familiar with Zwift, where on a virtual ride, there are endless packs of riders to jump on with. That's the Flanders Sportif but you know, in real life. The Ronde Sportive is a huge bike nerd party. Some people will tell you that you shouldn't ride the Sportive because it's too crowded, or as the sign at the bottom of the Koppenberg said, too crowdy. And yes, if you want to get a clear shot at the Koppenberg or have the mirror all to yourself, then go ride them on any other day except the Sportive day or race day. But riding by yourself is not the point of the Ronde Sportive any more than having a quiet drink alone is the point of going to a hopping bar on a Saturday night. You're here for the party. Coming into Flanders, we brought a whole bag of Perlazuma gear, rain jackets, booties, winter hats, and more. Thankfully, the roads were dry for our big rides. The 174 kilometer course that we did takes in two dozen cobbled sections and climbs. The key ones are the Muir van Gerardbergen, which comes early, and then the Koppenberg and the old Quermont, followed soon after by the Paderberg. You're probably familiar with the visual of the Muir, a little church up on top. It's about a kilometer long, averages 9%, and kicks up to nearly 20%. Even on Sportive Day, it's a party up there. The Koppenberg is like a Disneyland ride, at least in terms of the line. All right, moment of truth. The traffic will it be too crowded to ride, or we'll be able to clear it. Take, what, what, what's your call? I think it's just going to be a perfect amount of crowdiness. The organizers started a new program of letting about 100 people go at a time to try to avoid the worst of the bottlenecking, where the climb pinches in width and steepens in gradient, and people usually come off their bikes. Ben, it was so close. I was right <laughs> on your wheel, we were weaving, we were jockeying, and then some guy just stopped in front of me and I T-boned him, 
But I was immediately back on my bike, and then I was able to ride all the way to the top. You know what helps? Is yelling. On your left, on your left, on your left, on your left! That, that seemed to work. The old Quermont is more than two kilometers long. It only averages 4%, but there's an 11% kick in there. That's what I'm talking about. That's why you were at the Ronda. Paderberg is short and steep, averaging 12% with a 20% spike. But from there, it's not too far to the finish. For the finish, people line it up to zoom down the wide lanes to the finish just west of Odenard. Most of us are not young people. None of us are actual bike racers. And this is not an actual race. All that said, why not wind it up a bit for the final? Across the line, it's time to find your friends, find some food, and toast the day with a Belgian brew. Cheers! For more information and inspiration on this and many other Belgian sportives, visit cyclinginflanders.cc. Thanks for riding along. <laughs>